Well, it's it's funny. So I um I mean I just I it it really is personal for me. Again, I remember what it was like um when my mom was in that situation. And I, you know, I remember when I was still thinking of what business to open that I wanted to work with seniors because my friends' parents and my parents. Trust Home Loans and the Serving Senior Podcast. And I've got one of my good friends, Tim Tuttle here. He is going to share with you what he does to help seniors not just survive, but thrive when it comes to their retirement. So Tim is one of the folks that I've really respected in our industry. He shines a, a, a great light on how to serve seniors at a high level. So Tim, thank you for being here. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. Now, Tim, I'm going to throw a, a really hard question to start off. All right. I want to hear your, I think you said you're excited about football season. What's what's most exciting and who's your team? So I am a born and bred Nebraska corn husker and we had that. So I'm old enough to remember when they were the Alabama of the, or the Georgia. Wow. Of the, we, the black we, shirt defense. Yeah. Yeah. Three national championships in five years and, and uh, a whole lot of broken roads since then. <laughs> that's that's all tell me what's the prediction for this season i'm going to write it down and this is recorded so now we're going to re we're going to revisit this prediction i will say eight and four before uh the bowl game or any sort of um like that's not including like if they go to the big 10 championship game or anything i'll say eight, eight, and four. eight wins all right is that solid enough i should go to vegas right now draft kings no book it no i am the biggest kool-aid drinker i <laughs> thought scott frost was gonna work man I really did. I was like, how could it not work? Uh, and um, well, you know, <laughs> spoiler <laughs> alert, we had plans, work. God laughs, right? It well, didn't work, right? That's yeah. yeah. Oh, that's all. Well, so Mike, tell us uh, a little background and you can kind of bring us up to speed if you like. We know you work with, with seniors now, so we look yeah. forward to visiting that, but maybe give us a little of your, your background, what you did before this, where you're from, those type of things. Oh, yeah. So I was born and raised in, uh, well, I was born in Columbus, Nebraska, raised in uh, Norfolk, Nebraska, which is a small town. It's big for Nebraska, 25,000 people. But okay, um, nice. in uh, Northeast Nebraska, happens to be the hometown of Johnny Carson. Nice. And, uh, yeah, I graduated there and had an uh, Army ROTC scholarship and went to school at the University of Kansas. Okay. And um, from there, I went to sales. Uh, it was weird. Even though I had the ROTC scholarship, it was right after the Berlin Wall fell, and so I didn't have an army job. So I went into sales. Okay. Uh, was in the reserves, I uh, went into sales for about oh six seven years. Lived in Kansas City, lived in Chicago for a while, and then went back to law school. And I hmm. uh, was still in the Army Reserve through law school. Got done with law school, went back to the University of Nebraska, where we won a national championship while I was in school. There you go. We won, Kansas won a national championship in basketball while I was in school. Wow. I think that makes me a distinguished alumni. I don't know, I think. But mm -hmm. um, so then I uh, went to school at University of Nebraska, graduated, and uh, joined the Air Force. Oh, nice. Air Force JAG um, for 14 years. Um, what my first base was uh, Albuquerque, uh, New Mexico. Okay. Um, got married there. Uh, moved to Germany, um, and then we had an awesome time in Germany. Went to Texas, had a boy there. Moved to Maryland, had a girl there. And then about 14 years after uh, of being on active duty for 14 years, decided we um, were done moving and got out, um, got back into the reserves, and uh, we moved to Nashville. Nice. What year was that? That was in uh, 2014. 2014. Yeah. So I moved to, I worked for the Army Corps of Engineers as a lawyer. Okay. Did that for about four, four years, I guess. And then um, I took a promotion down to Huntsville at um, Army Material okay. Command. And I thought it was a good idea to drive 100 miles each way every day. Um, and uh, 
tell you what, it didn't take you long doing that when you realize that, hey, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. Sure. That needs to happen. And so I started thinking about opening my own business. And this was 20, probably 18 is when I started working there. And during that period of time, my mom got sick. Hmm. And that's my mom right there. If you're probably oh, wondering. Okay, out. that's awesome. Um, there's a reason for the cutout. I guess I'll tell you that in a bit. Company but anyways, mascot. That's right. Kind of. She's got my back, right? That's so awesome. um, yep. so my mom got sick and I remember flying to Omaha to see her. And while we're meeting, one of the social workers came out or discharge planners came out and said, so where's your mom going to rehab? I, was like, I don't know you tell us right it's like no that's not how it works you've got to choose a rehab uh, facility well you know we had no idea first of all I'm not from Omaha my yeah. brothers and my dad were there but we don't know anything about the medical community we don't know where the rehab facilities are we don't really know what kind of rehab she needs we just have to pick one so my aunt actually did the work but I remember that feeling that sinking feeling that hey we have to make a really important decision for somebody and we don't have very much information. We don't have anybody to guide us. And it was scary. It was a really, really uncomfortable situation. So then um, I go back to work. My mom eventually passes away. Um, and uh, about, you know, after, after a while of just an hour and 40 minutes each way being on the road, I realized that I, again, I'm not doing this anymore and the idea of assisted living locators was pitched to me. And they're talking about how what you do is you introduce people. So you, you talk to folks who are needing senior placement, need to move into a um, senior community or their family does. And they're overwhelmed with the amount of information. They don't know where these places are. They don't know the specialties or anything like that. So um, it seemed very uh, similar to the situation that we were in in um, Omaha. And I thought, people do that? And they're like, yeah, people do that. So uh, I opened this business um, right at three years ago. It'll be my three-year anniversary on Tuesday. Good for you. Well, sorry to hear about your mom, but it sounds like you're doing a great job of you know keeping her memory alive and, and helping other people based on her situation. So good for you. She's with me every day. Every, I mean, she, she flows through me and um, hmm. my daughter, um, She's silly, just like my mom. And I just see her there. and it makes uh, me happy. Oh, that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, that's, that's Thank awesome. You. Well, Tim, one of the things I've always respected about you is that I can tell when you, when you talk, you always do what's right for the client. So I know that's one of your superpowers is giving people good advice, I guess, maybe share with us some of your other superpowers or maybe why someone would choose to do business with you, how you stand out versus the competition that you deal with. Well, it's, it's funny. So I, um, I mean, I just, I, it, it really is personal for me. Again, I remember what it was like um, when my mom was in that situation. And I, you know, I remember when I was still thinking of what business to open that I wanted to work with seniors because my friend's parents and my parents' friends were like these people that had this just huge impact on me. Um, and kind of both ways, like you would see people who would be in great, you know, they're, they're inspiring behavior. There's people who didn't have inspiring behavior and, and, um, but they, they, as they got older, you would, you know, you really just gained a huge amount of respect for them and, and the opportunity to, um, to work with them and to take care of them and serve them was, uh, was something that I really, really wanted to do. Um, I love stories. It's one of the things that is, um, you know, really important for me and something I'm really interested in. So I just love talking to seniors and, and finding out, okay, where, um, you know, what did you do? What do you like to do? Tell me your, tell me your past and, and what have you. And in those stories is the information to determine where they should go hmm. and like where they should live. Because what we're trying to do is find the senior's next home. Got it. It's not a facility. It's not a nursing home. It's not a, oh, they put me in a home. We don't want to put anybody anywhere. We want people to welcome, you know, to, to embrace the idea that they're going into a new community. Mm -hmm. Recognizing not everyone feels that way when they go there. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to make it the kind of place and the kind of match to where when they've been there for a little while, they're like, okay, yeah, this is my home. 
This is where I should be because everyone's got resistance to change. Totally, totally understandable. But um, it's it's important for us not just to match up where they want to live in Nashville, which is important, how much they can afford, what their care needs are. But the fourth kind of piece, which is what do you like to do? What makes you happy uh, is really, really important into making that a home for them and then kind of enmeshing them the culture. So uh, they become part of the community. Hmm. Wow. That's great. That is awesome. You know, one, one other thing I like is I can tell that when you, when you talk, you know, you mean it, you know, there's a lot of the sales guys out there. Right. And it's, um, you know, you're just speaking from the heart. So you, you come across really well. So thanks for being that way with people. Cause I mean, people are stressed out in this situation and you do a great job of keeping them calm. Well, I appreciate that. I don't, um, I, 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 I can't fake it. I just can't. And I mean, and it is, it is funny because I am also, um, I'm kind of odd, I guess you would say from my experiences, you would expect. I would say unique, unique. Okay. Unique. Good. Okay. As a, um, as an air force lawyer, one of the most kind of, um, strictured, you know, uptight kind of, this is what we do um, environment, which I did really well in. I mean, um, I, re- I was able to retire after 30 years and um, I, I enjoyed it, even though it did have all that that structure. Um, one of the things you had asked my superpower, and I don't know if it's a superpower or not, I'd have to ask the people who listen to it, but um, I do Elvis and you'll see the Elvis Nutcracker over That's- here. That's great. Yeah, so yep. Everything means something in this room. Um, and so uh, I do Elvis at the communities. I love singing Elvis and I'm a big Elvis fan. And so I will sing Elvis at the communities. I mean, put on the whole red suit and the whole, you know, whole shooting match. Um, and I'll do it for free. And uh, the uh, I'm no Elvis tribute artist like these guys who win these contests or anything like that. Um, I say those people are phenomenal. They're world class. I'm pretty good. Uh People people really enjoy it, uh, you know, and so it is, uh, it's a lot of fun and um, it's just great to see just kind of the joy you can bring to the people Uh, uh, in these communities. Well, I haven't had the pleasure of seeing it, but I have heard about it and I have a couple ideas for you um, how we can use that. So sounds good. (laughs) Yeah, that's fantastic. Yep. Well, I was wondering, I wanted to see too, if you could share, maybe just so people listening or other professionals that may need to connect with you, maybe a situation where client came to you, you walked them through the process, maybe even wasn't, didn't go perfectly. It might've been difficult, but you got them through it. And maybe it would be an example for other people to, to hear exactly how it works step-by-step. No, no, absolutely. So we, um, I I can name a specific, uh, a specific case where, there was this family, a mom and um, dad were uh, worsening dementia, were in their home and did not want to leave their home mm. and wouldn't leave their home. And I, and I could see that it was causing an awful lot of stress for the son and for his wife. And I believe it was probably causing, you know, issues for his, his business because all the time that he had to spend going over to his, his mom and dad's house. And not all the time was it like an emergency or was it really even a situation where he needed to go over there. Like he had to leave his family for something that was not really an an issue, if you will. So I was really concerned for him and his wife. And I was concerned for his mom and dad um, because their their dementia was getting worse. And so I introduced them to a a care manager. Hmm. So this care manager came over and, and kind of took over. So I stood, I stepped back as a referral agent because we had found a place for them. We just needed mom and dad to come and approve it and they wouldn't leave their house. Oh, so, um, and so uh, the care manager went to the house, uh, went through like all the dad's medications, moms too, but particularly dad. And dad was hallucinating. Dad was having all these different issues. Okay. Um, but he was a primary caregiver for mom who had dementia. Well, dad was doing, I guess, kind of what my dad does. My dad lives up in Nebraska. He's still up there. And, you know, he likes these certain doctors and he likes these certain pharmacies. So he's got 
three doctors and four pharmacies and no one's talking to each other. So this guy was on like 12 drugs and they were not playing nicely together, if you will. So this care manager got him down to, to four medications and his delusions or his, his um, hallucinations went away and he became able to make decisions, including the decision to put his wife in a memory care community. So he's still at home and eventually he will probably go in the same community in the assisted living side of the memory care community. So we're able to, uh, you know, save his mom because realistically she was not going to be able to be, he wasn't taking care of her very well because he couldn't, he just didn't have the capacity. Uh, he then gained the capacity. He got well enough to determine that, Hey, I can't do that to where they went. She could now go to a place where, um, where she can stay and they can take care of her. She can be safe. She can be happy. And then now he's at his home, big home in Brentwood and um, they don't have to sell it in a fire sale. You know, and so he's still living there uh, and uh, he's thriving. And so in this case, it was it wasn't necessarily a um, a placement win. And I guess it was his mom moved in to a, a community that we that has great care and we love. But he's better. His life is better. His son and his wife is better. Lives are better. And it's just about it's about service. I mean, it is. um you know, I served in the military. Uh, I serve now. And it is what this is all about. I like to say um, that, you know, you do the right thing, you serve people, and success will follow. And um, so, and it's, you know, in my life that has played out. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that it will start playing out even more in this business soon. But we've been in it three years, so it takes a long time to, to yep. get out there and kind of, um, you know, plant seeds. You can't you can't plant seeds, walk out the next day and say, what the heck happened? I thought I was going to, you know, I yeah. thought the green was going to be coming. It just, it does take a while and, and you have that patience. So, yeah, that's awesome. And that's, you know, we haven't had this specific conversation, but I just kind of felt that from you. I knew that you did the right thing for people. That's why I invited you on here because you, you, uh, I, I like to say never nervous when focused on service, you know, when you're out right. there helping people, you don't get nervous. You're not trying to twist their arm, make them do anything. As long as you're focused on helping people, success will come back your way if you help enough other people. So that's a great, great story. I guess maybe go ahead. You, you had a comment. No, I was going to say that. So when I was in sales, before I went back to law school, um, the part that I was always the worst at was the close. Mm -hmm. And I was just not a very good closer. And um, in this business, you really, at least I don't think you can close hard. Right. If you do, you're going to end up with a bad placement. Mm -hmm. And you're going to end up with, with a resentful uh, client and staff. I mean, you're going to, you're, you're trying to bring somebody there that's a good fit there. So that person will be happy. And then the community is going to be happy with that. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't, you don't choose your clients. So sometimes you're going to have them, you know, not be necessarily as happy as, as they would be. Um, yeah. As you'd want them to be, because, you know, some people just generally like to complain about things, but um, you want to find them the place where there's the least to complain about mm -hmm. and where it fits them as well as you possibly can make it fit them. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, I got, we're, um, we're going to wrap this up. I got, I got three things for you. Number Imagine. one, um, what would be a great, re not a referral. We know that, but great referral source for you. So what kind of people, number two is how would people get in touch with you? What areas do you serve that? And then my third, probably most important question is, could you please become a Tennessee Titans fan? Because we need a championship. I think you're the golden touch. Okay, here we go. So number one, um, realistically, I'd like to work with some doctor's offices Okay, because they see, uh, they see their clients or they see their patients and they know where in the process of aging they're at. Okay. And then when you talk to people who are primary care physicians, you can have enough time to actually work through the process to where you can find them the right place. Okay. Uh, so primary care physicians would be great. Um, second thing, um, my uh, so our email our, our phone number is 615 375 3553. 
There's nice. two of them. It's me and Nancy Blankenship. She okay. is a social worker. She does most of the tours. She's awesome. And uh, my email is Tim T at assisted living locators.com. That's great. I second that on Nancy. She is awesome. Yeah, she's great. And then the third thing is, yes. As a matter of fact, I don't, I mean, being from Nebraska, I don't have a pro team. So um, my pro team, I, I have been following the, the Titans. All right. I, we got a chance. We got a win folks. We got a championship. I, mean, I like Derek Henry because, you know, he's like an old school running back. I yeah. like the fact that he attacks the holes and, and he's a, he's a big dude. It's tough to bring down and um, get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. I love uh, that. That's awesome. I don't know if you've heard, we're actually currently undefeated right now too, just so you know. <laughs> this is, hey, I tell you what, the, the best time of the year is a week before football season because yep. everybody's happy. Yep, exactly. Survive. Yeah, we're we're undefeated, sir. Why? But I just want to say thank you so much for being on this. I really do appreciate you. I've always respected you and respect you more now after hearing your story. So please reach out to Tim if you need him. Reach out to us if you, we can do anything to help you on the financing side. And please join us next week for the next Serving Senior Podcast. Thanks again. You, Matt. Take care. See you, Tim. Hey, this is Matt Helton with One Trust Home Loans, home of Retirement Mortgage Solutions. And we really do appreciate you checking out the Serving Seniors podcast today. Now, please go to the description down in the body uh, of the podcast where you can subscribe to get future shows. Please click that notification button so you get notified when other shows drop. And also, if you can go to servingseniorspodcast.com, and we'd love to hear a comment about our show. We have a heart to serve seniors, and we have a heart to make sure seniors don't just survive retirement. Don't just get by in retirement. We want to show seniors how to thrive in retirement. So if you know of anyone that's 55 and older that could use some extra cash flow, maybe the retirement's not going the way that they like. Our retirement mortgage solutions are designed for folks, and depending on the state, they're either 55 or 62 and older to make sure that they have that kind of retirement that they want as long as they own a home and they're in a good equity position, there could be some solutions that they may not have thought about, or maybe they've thought of, and they just didn't know how they work. That's what we do. So anyone in that age group that could use some mortgage advice, my team and I would love to be able to help them. Thanks again, and look forward to seeing you on the next show. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.